Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a technique for activating halogens to nucleophilic substitution using silver nitrate. Halogens are well known good leaving groups, but they can be made even better leaving groups by the use of silver nitrate. Let's go ahead and get started. The reason that silver is used in these reactions is because it is both a halophile and a Lewis acid. Silver ion, Ag+, is extremely halophilic, meaning it has a very strong affinity to want to bind towards a halogen lone pair. A good example of this is the solubility equilibrium for silver chloride. Normally, chloride metal salts are extremely soluble in water, having the ability to dissolve uh, very large amounts, even in small quantities of water, such as table salt, sodium chloride, because chlorine does not have a very strong affinity for most metals and instead is much more stabilized in aqueous solution. However, if you look at AgCl, we see that the Ksp, the solubility equilibrium constant, is 10 to the negative 10, which means that in a solution of AgCl, there will only be around 10 to the negative 5 molar free Ag plus ions or Cl minus ions. That is a tiny fraction, meaning AgCl is not at all soluble because chlorine and silver have such a strong affinity for one another. Part of the reason that silver very easily coordinates a halogen is because it has empty orbitals as a Lewis acid. Many metals do, but what's unique about silver is its electron configuration. It has a completely full D sublevel and a completely empty S sublevel. As a result, this leads to a very good overlap with the chlorine orbitals. So what will happen is that chlorine with its lone pair will donate an electron pair to the empty silver 5s orbital, right? The spherical cationic orbital that we see here. This will form a sort of in-between covalent bond, also known as a dative bond, between the chlorine and the silver, in which the both the electrons are being contributed by the chlorine. This gives the chlorine a formal positive charge, which activates it as a leaving group, right? The positively charged halogen is an activated leaving group because once it leaves, there is no longer a negative charge, uh, a negative excess charge being created. Because of this, silver very strongly favors an SN1 mechanism for most uh, halides. Once the chlorine donates its electron pair towards the silver, we get this activated chloride uh, cation intermediate, which then very easily falls off, far more easily than a regular halogen, to simply give us the carbocation and precipitating the very stable compound AgCl as a byproduct. Right? So the addition of silver nitrate to a mixture of halides strongly favors the SN1 process when favorable. It is worth noting, in order for this to work, you need a stoichiometric amount of the silver nitrate. This is not a catalyst. You're actually precipitating out all of the silver you use in a one-to-one -one ratio whenever you react it with the halide. As a result, the rate of ionization, or the rate of the SN1 reaction, is now dependent on how much silver ion you actually have. So the rate is not just K times R leaving group, it is now also dependent on the concentration of silver nitrate, since that is what's affecting the ionization. Now, the SN1 substitution of silver nitrate very frequently involves the participation of the solvent. It enhances what are known as solvolysis reactions. So for example, if you have this uh, bromide here, which has two phenyl groups adjacent to it, right? it's very strongly resin stabilized, it would form a very good cation. If you were to treat this with silver nitrate, that bromine is going to get very quickly pulled off by the silver, giving you the resulting cation. If you were to do this in ethanol, ethanol is a weak nucleophile, and so it won't directly attack the bromine, instead it will wait for cation formation. Once it forms, though, the ethanol very easily substitutes onto the cation, giving you the resulting ether. However, it is possible to provide an external nucleophile as, a as opposed to the solvent. So while typically the solvent is used, you can provide an external nucleophile. A good example of this would be running the same reagent, but in DMSO, which is a no in a non-nucleophilic solvent, and providing the, so the uh, nucleophile as sodium cyanide. In this case, the silver nitrate, again, will pull off the bromide as AGBr, leaving a cation, and then the sodium cyanide, or rather the cyanide anion, can directly attack the carbocation to give the cyanide or nitrile product. 
it's important to note that although this is occurring in DMSO and with a strong nucleophile, this is actually going to occur via an SN1 pathway because the silver is going to very strongly favor the removal of that halide. So if, there are situations in which a secondary species uh, under aprotic solvent and strong nucleophile can undergo SN1. A very common situation is where you have silver nitrate on a very stable cation because that very quickly ionizes before the nucleophile has a chance to attack and then will, the nucleophile is, will attack the cation instead of performing an SN2. So what happens when you have a less stable cation than the ones we've been talking about? In the previous example, we looked at a dibenzyl bromide, which is extremely stable as a cation. However, what if you have something like a primary or methyl species? Well, SN1 is never possible on a normal, non-resonance stabilized primary or methyl halide. They're just too unstable. So what happens is that when the chlorine or the other halide bonds to the silver, it stays in this intermediate state. It doesn't auto-ionize. Instead, it hangs out as this uh, cationic halide species and waits for the nucleophile to come attack. This enhances the rate of the process because this is an activated leaving group. So again, you get the same product. You get the AGCL being kicked out as a solid and the ethyl nucleophile now being formed as the reagent. However, it's occurring faster than a normal SN2 because the AGCL is activating the leaving group for substitution, just like it was in SN1, but not forming the cation. The last thing I want to talk about, which is an absolute must, is that nitrate from the silver nitrate is not a nucleophile. A common mistake people make is assuming that the NO3- anion will act as a nucleophile if you don't have other nucleophiles present. But NO3- is not nucleophilic. NO2- can be, and in fact silver nitrite is often used to provide a source of nucleophilic nitrite. However, NO3- is not. So for example, let's say that we had the following species. It is tertiary and it is very heavily resonance stabilized. So it very much favors SN1, right? But, and we're gonna treat it with silver nitrate and DMSO. You might think that what's gonna happen is that the bromine is going to be pulled off by the uh, silver, leaving a cation, which is going to happen. And then, then the nitrate will go ahead and use its negative charge to attack the cation, giving you the species on the right. This does not occur though. Instead, once the ionization has happened from the silver, the nitrate will actually go ahead and deprotonate, if possible, an adjacent CH bond, giving instead the elimination product or the E1 product of this reaction. If you're not familiar yet with E1 reactions, I recommend you go ahead and check out that video afterwards. But again, in this case, nitrate will not add as a nucleophile to the carbocation. Instead, it will act as a weak base and deprotonate the adjacent CH bond to form a new alkene. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos in the chemistry playlist. And if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.